Up next on Centennial Sportsnet, we bring you red carpet access to Canada's finest athletes attending the 2015 Hall of Fame ceremony. Looking for a new sport to try out? We give you an inside look into Toronto's fastest growing relaxing pastime. Hobby or obsession? We hit up the Amsterdam Brewery to check in on the Toronto Card Show. And a Hamilton, Ontario native continues his preparation for one of his biggest bouts. Centennial Sportsnet, coming in hot. Watch it. Welcome inside the Sportsnet studios, everyone. I am Kyle, along with my lovely co-host, Miss Pamela Kiss. And Pamela, the city of Toronto was absolutely electric last week following their beloved Blue Jays. Unfortunately, it just wasn't meant to be falling to the Royals, but definitely a year to remember. I know, Kyle. What a better year to uh, me make a move here to Toronto and witness one of the most exciting seasons in Jays history. Unfortunately, it was heartbreaking to see them lose, but let's hope that next year is the winner. And speaking of big events for Toronto, this past Wednesday night, 11 Canadian athletes were honored at the annual Sport Hall of Fame ceremony, where I had the chance to interview some of the nation's finest sports legends on the red carpet, including the great one. I'm having a case outside Maple Leaf Garden at the 2015 Canada Sports Hall of Fame induction celebration, where great 11 Canadian athletes like Paul Coffey and Craig Forrest are going to be recognized by the likes of Wayne Gretzky and Donovan Bailey. This year, a class of the country's most influential and aspiring athletes and sport builders are inducted. <laughs> Congratulations to the class of 2015. This year, 11 athletes and builders joined the 548 honored members of Canada's Sports Hall of Fame, established in 1955 to promote a greater awareness of the nation's heritage of sport. I've been inducted here twice, and, and it's always good to pay homage to, um, uh, to the people that's been inducted before, and also the, 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 you know, the great class that's going in this year. So. Uh, it, it's always good to, to come in and support. Win, lose, or draw, I represent Canada. I love playing for Canada. I love this country. Uh, I remember where I came from, and uh, when we had the chance to do something special in 2000 by winning the Gold Cup, Canada's first ever international tournament, uh, that was really probably the moment that put me over the edge for, for this uh, type of thing. Uh, soccer doesn't get recognized all that often. I think I'm the fifth person, and hopefully I, I won't be the last. We could not help but ask Craig the question that every soccer fan ponders. Who is the best, Messi or Ronaldo? What are we talking about? Uh, all, best all around? All around Ronaldo. Soccer. If I'm going to talk about best attacking, flamboyant, goal scoring guy of all time, <laughs> Messi. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, Canada Sports Hall of Fame is a huge honor. I think anytime you get a chance to represent your country, you have your uh, Canada's name in front of anything you're doing is very important. You know, I got great pleasure to play with him. To me, he was one of the greatest players ever to play the game. He won, uh, I believe, four championships and Canada Cup. He was just a true winner. And uh, more importantly, he's just a really good guy. So I'm glad I'm here to be able to present him tonight. And that's what happens when you get older and you start presenting guys. You don't go in. But the Hall of Fame ceremony was not the only thing on people's mind in Toronto on Wednesday night. I am missing the Jays game, yes. Yes, but I, I will be um, I'll be in here watching the Jays game. Should I say this? <laughs> missing the Jays game, but my two boys went to the game tonight, so they're representing their family. And, uh, you know, it's been uh, unreal for Canada and for Toronto, obviously. This was certainly a night this very well-deserved 11 inductees will never forget. For Centennial Sportsnet, I'm Pamela Kiss. Collectibles have been around for years. Whether it's a hobby or an obsession, every sports fan has their favorite rookie card or signed piece of memorabilia. And frankly, it seems like every weekend my old man is making a joke about some stamp collection or how he paid a nickel for a Dave Keon hockey card 30 years ago and it's now worth the price of a Porsche 911. Truth is, I used to rummage through boxes at card shows looking for certain players I wanted. I remember waiting in line for Guy Lafleur to shake my hand and autograph an old Canadian's card I bought years ago. And that's what it's all about. Card collecting, really, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's alive and well, just as it always was. Centennial's Rob Marsiglio has more. On Sunday, October 25th, the Toronto Card Show took place at the Amsterdam Brewery in Leeside. Like many others, Frank Williamson's passion for the hobby started at a young age. 
back when I was a kid, just like every other kid, collected hockey cards, collected baseball cards. So I'm a fan, I'm a collector. And then I actually went a long period of time where I didn't even see a single card at all. That period Frank is referring to took place after the trading card boom of the early 90s, the peak of its popularity. It was massive. It was a billion dollar industry. It was mainstream. Everybody collected cards. Shows like ours, there used to be one every night of the week in Toronto. With, with memorabilia in sports too, is it was big in the 90s, but what you got to remember is you had the Leafs who were doing well year after year, you had the 93 run, you had the 92-93 Blue Jays, people start getting into things. Ray, who deals exclusively baseball cards in Hockey Crazy Canada, has reaped the rewards of the Blue Jays' recent success. Uh, this has been the best year of business ever. Um, I actually had a really hard time keeping stock. My supplier, my wholesaler ran out of stock, so we were always scrambling. I would honestly estimate that I sold about 100 Josh Donaldson rookie cards this uh, between July and now. While success on the field leads to immediate rewards for the industry, Frank understands it is the younger generation who will drive it forward. Kids are getting into the hobby because of their parents. It ends up being something that they do together. Like when I was young, it was a hobby that I enjoyed and I collected for a long time. And then as my son started getting into hockey and enjoying it, I brought out a bunch of my old collections, which, which we also liked. So I would say that we've, we've gotten closer. We spent a lot of time doing this. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy doing this with him a lot. Card companies also understand how important the youth demographic is and have evolved to appeal to that market. I know that cards today are a lot cooler than when I was a kid. Cards were really simplistic when I was younger. Now there's um, autograph cards, they're inserted in the packs. Also, you, you know, game-worn jerseys and so forth are inserted into the cards. There's some unique creative things that they've done. While the card collecting community is always evolving, every individual hopes to tell a story similar to John Richards one day. Well, back in 1979-80, I bought a full box of the Wayne Gretzky rookie year. 35 years later, last spring, I went to the big expo show. I got 20,000 cash. I took it. I, when I bought it originally, I paid $18 for the box. We'll just have to see if it's in the cards. Coming up after the break, the Centennial Colts make their return to the OCAA after 20 years. And we will take a look at the most relaxing growing sport in Toronto. Is your dog uncooperative, unresponsive, or just plain unbelievable? Introducing DOG Training by Tyler Bitten, a comprehensive program that can be all yours for $19.99, including all new methods that probably aren't FDA approved. Other dog training programs leave you stressed out and searching for answers? But the DOG program is designed to strengthen your dog intellectually and physically through time-tested methods that can help your best friend be a better best friend. So you can get back to doing what you love the most. Reading cookbooks indoors with no kitchen in sight. And who doesn't want that? The DOG training program, dedicated, organized, and gentle, is on sale for this very special offer of $19.99 plus shipping and handling. So give us a call today at 1-888-944-WOLF. The Centennial Colts relaunched their volleyball program and rejoined the OCAA for the 2015-2016 season since winning their last championship in 1989. Their first opponent, the Durham Lords. The women's side action started for uh, Durham. This game proved to be a test for the new Colts roster playing against the top Durham side of veteran players. The first set of the Colts was one of they would want to forget as they showed they still need to improve on their serve. Second set, during the set, the Colts would make their comeback with Libero Kadisha Powell Graham passing to the setter, picking up the ball of the block, and the star of the Colts, Chanel Woods, would spike it over the block. But the Lords, recovered from the eight-point deficit with the help of six-foot-three Jessica Broad. She led the 
Dorham back-to-back -back kills and a powerful ace, leaving the Colts stunned. Centennial Falls wins the second set, but it came to a close with Lucia Kalamayer's serve rallied between both teams, which included a nice league of Stephanie LaRose and the Colts keeping it alive until Lizzie Bowers hit it into the net. In the third set, the Colts fell back into the same routine and Broad continued to dominate for Durham with a final kill that ended the set 25-17. Final score? Durham sweeps the Colts 3-0. The next challenge for the Colts at home is Seneca. Following the men's game, the Lords are coming off a 2014 undefeated regular season. Durham, we see here they're preparing to start the game and Durham started the game with Eric Johnson's pass and attack to take a 1-0 lead. The Colts are now responding after receiving a serve and Ronald Ho whacks the ball off Jansen for Centennial's first point, 3-1 Durham. The Lords show off their strong middle attack with Andrew Watson soaring up and smashing the ball off the block, 9-5 Durham. Both teams were taking a long rally showcasing a great defense, hustle and skill, with the Colts ultimately taking the point with a strong net presses from Ho, 11-9 Durham. Can we see it? Nice. Now Nick Coleman, the fifth year senior, serves up an ace and the Lords take the first set 25, 27, 25. Second set was all Lords. The middle strike from Watson again with the Colts up, able to close up their block, 12, six Durham. And the men enjoyed another good rally with the Lords able to come up with the point again after Jensen was able to send an attack cross court. This parts the Lords to end the set on a 14-0 run. Now Coleman again is able to serve for the set and the Lords take the second 25-6. Their set was a tight one. The Colts start with a middle attack of their own with Fillion showing some power and 5-3 Durham. Andrew Watson capped off his great night with another smash and the Lords took the third set 25-23. They were shut out on the return to the league 3-0 and the Lords show that they will mean business again this season. It's no secret mixed martial arts has taken the world by storm. We've all seen the ads for pay-per-view fights showcasing some of the biggest stars like Conor McGregor and Daniel Cormier. But some may forget that there's an awful long road and journey to get to that elite level. Centennial Sportsnet's Dwayne Turner and Lauren Maharaj went inside the octagon with Hamilton, Ontario's Lyndon Whitlock as he prepares for his primetime fight on November 13th in Hard Knocks 47. It's here where it all began for MMA vet Lyndon Whitlock. Parabellum is a mixed martial arts gym tucked away into the industrial area of Oakville, Ontario, but it's also the home for improvement for Whitlock. In between training, he coaches other eager martial artists of the same passion here at Parabella and in the sister city of Burlington at BTC. For the last few weeks, the bantamweight has been working tirelessly towards his Hard Knocks FC debut on November 13th. Recently, Whitlock took his camp to Florida to train at one of the sport's most famous gyms called the Black Zillions with coach Evan Boris. Thanks to that trip, Whitlock is confident that he can improve on his already professional record of 9-5. and five. Well, obviously Evan's one of my coaches, so where he goes, I'll go. But uh, he opened up the door, the opportunity for us to go down and train. And, uh, you know, we, we took the opportunity. It was great. The room you walk in, there's 40 guys on the mat ready to spar or wrestle or jiu-jitsu, whatever it is. And it's just fantastic. 40 guys on the same path, with the same mindset, same goals. It's good. You know, you have the top, top guys. Uh, they have a lot of heavier guys that... It was cool to be around and absorb their knowledge, but you know, you can't train with them. And have a lot of younger, uh, younger, lighter guys that are fantastic to work with too. So it's just a whole run of 50, 60 guys are just killer. So more than anything, it's just motivating. It's, um, it's refreshing to see guys that are going 100% all the time, pushing themselves. They're pushing you to get better. When you're around like minds, you're gonna get a better result, more than less. Opponent Noah Ali has a Muay Thai background peppered with submission victories, knockouts, and decisions. 
Whitlock is also well versed in his striking game, but where Ollie brings movement, Whitlock brings explosiveness, and it seems like no matter what, Whitlock is prepared for anything that comes his way once he steps into the octagon. Um, I'm expecting to be mobile. He disengages and engages and disengages. So I'm going to have to plot forward, I think, uh, look for my opportunities to uh, trap him and let my combos go. So his focus is there. He, uh, he's all the way in. He's striking with you or he's all the way out. Okay. And I mean, he's not playing that, uh, that middle ground. So, you know, I'm going to have to get used to the distance and the timing. And that's about it. Although finishing fights is a huge bonus for a fighter, for Whitlock, it's simply about getting the victory. Against Ali, the bantamweight will look to outsmart the hometown favorite and eventually finish the fight with his hand raised, no matter what the outcome is. I think um, our two striking styles are completely different, so it might be a little bit boring on the feet for a little bit. Um, so maybe one of us try to take it again, I'm not sure. But we'll see, hopefully I can get in there, I can find the range real fast. He likes to be mobile and move, 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 move. So. We'll see, just so you can find the rhythm faster. Um, I never completely looked to finish. So I obviously, I want to finish, but I can't force it. You know, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to try to figure out his range and his rhythm. If I can figure it out soon, then maybe we'll finish it. So I'm excited. I haven't fought in Calgary, I haven't fought out west yet, so I'm looking forward to it. Should be a good time. Hard Knocks 47 rolls around on Friday, November 13th in Calgary, and considering the amount of work Lennon and his team have done so far, they're expecting to get the W against Noah Ali. Let's just say it's going to be an exciting affair. For Centennial Sportsnet reporting live, I'm Lauren Maharaj. There are several ways to relieve stress. Some people meditate, others do yoga. However, Dario Passarelli found a new relaxing way. Thank you, Pamela and Cal, from your wonderfully safe location behind a desk. I, on the other hand, am made of sterner stuff, and I'm out here on the field at Battleground Academy which actually stands for Backyard Axe Throwing League. Here has been Toronto's best little secret for quite some time, but it's no longer a secret, and it certainly isn't little. Established in 2006 by Matt Wilson, the sport of axe throwing has captured the imagination of more and more Canadians every year. The question we have to ask is, why? Because it's awesome. <laughs> There's nothing in the world quite like it. There's something primal, something visceral, and something incredibly powerful about it. It just feels really neat. First of all, when you throw it, you hear that thud, it sticks. It's something unlike I've, anything I've ever done before. And then to be able to compete, but also with hang out with friends at the same time, it was like a wonderful combination. And then I, I, I hope at least we're, what we're able to do through, through our, our events and our, our parties is that we try to bring the same sort of vibe, the same fun to those parties. I mean, this, is, uh, this grew organically, literally out of a, a backyard, just a bunch of friends. So I think there was already a sort of a, a culture in place that uh, made it attractive to people. Everybody wants to throw an axe and they just don't know it yet. And that's really true. You don't know you want to do it until you actually do it. I was very excited to try it myself, but also scared. After seeing the points they put on safety, I had no more worries and could focus 100% on my technique. I'm visualizing my ex. I'm visualizing my ex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's something I'm passionate about, so I'm gonna get people in who are also either right away, they're really into it, or even vice versa, somebody comes in maybe a little more timid to see that proverbial little old lady stick that bullseye or hit a clutch, never thinking she'll ever do it, and then jump up with joy, barely able to contain her excitement. Yeah, like that's infectious, and it never, three years later, that doesn't get old. So you add one part competition, one part friendly environment, throw in a few adult beverages, and deadly sharp objects, and that is certainly a recipe for success. From its humble beginnings in a backyard, to now eight locations, the future certainly looks bright for battlegrounds. And that, my dear friends, is no bull. So I'm Dario Passarelli, Centennial College. Coming up on Centennial Sportsnet, be sure to check out our YouTube channel next week for Stacey Deshawn's exclusive feature on free agent basketball in the GTA. And I sit down with a familiar face to talk all things NBA as the season's finally here and ready to get underway. All that and then some on Sportsnet after the break. She doesn't always have time to go to the gym, but when she does, 
she makes sure to take all business calls and dress appropriately for the occasion. When she just touches the piano, a Beethoven symphony magically starts playing. Her celebrity status gets her in all the A-list parties. She is the most interesting woman in the world. I don't always drink those eggs, but when I do, I make sure I'm already drinking before. Stay thirsty, my friends. As mentioned at the beginning of this show, and not to rub any salt in the wounds, the city of Toronto is of course mourning over the Blue Jays' halt to what we all thought was, let's face it, a World Series run. But at the, as the old saying goes, all good things must come to an end. And as the saying that I'm going to make up right now goes, I personally can't wait for some NBA action to get underway. Lots of storylines coming into this season, from LaMarcus Aldridge signing with the Spurs, to the infamous DeAndre Jordan saga with the Mavs and Clips, to the new crop of rookies about to begin their NBA careers. With everything you need to know to get set for the 2015 season, here's the latest edition of Full Time Out. Welcome inside the studio for another edition of Full Time Out alongside NBA insider Ali Khan, Ref Johnny, and Ali Khan. The 2015-2016 NBA season finally here, but it's coming in on a bit of a sad note. Uh, Flip Saunders passing away with his battle with Hodgkin's lymphoma, and it's obviously hit the league very hard. You look at a guy like Flip Saunders, someone who really revolutionized the game, Kyle, and he's a guy that won a thousand different games at various different levels of basketball. The relationships that he built really stand out as well. We saw Kevin Garnett post on his Instagram page sitting in Saunders' parking spot saying he'll always remember him. And the relationship he built with a veteran leader like Chauncey Billups, who he led to three straight Eastern Conference Finals with the Pistons. He was a guy that was able to adapt across the league. The league definitely will remember Flip Saunders. Saunders finishes his NBA career with 654 wins, 592 losses. But moving on to the Eastern Conference, we'll address that first. You know the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to be the top dog in that conference. You look at a team like Chicago, Atlanta, and Toronto, those are going to be sort of the top four. Which team do you see maybe sneaking in the back door? Not a lot of people talking about them. They'll be a bit of a dark horse. You know what, Kyle? I think we have to look at the Miami Heat. They're a team that had a lot of misfortune and bad luck last season. We saw what happened to Chris Bosh. He had a blood clot in his lungs forced him to miss a lot of the season. Dwayne Wade mm -hmm. isn't get, getting any younger either, but they had a player in Hassan Whiteside, a legitimate NBA center, a seven-foot post threat emerge. They brought in a true point guard like Goran Dragic to run that offense, and they have a very underrated coach in Eric Spolstra. I think they're a team that could rise to as high as second in the East if the cards fall right. Absolutely, and moving to the Western Conference, obviously the defending champions, Golden State Warriors, are the team to talk about. But you look at a team like the Houston Rockets, they come up just a little bit short last year. You look at James Harden, he feels like that MVP trophy was stolen away from him from Steph Curry. Outside of those top two, uh, your dark horse for the Western Conference. I think, again, you have to go with a team that had a little bit of misfortune last year in the Oklahoma City Thunder. They're a team that lost their leading scorer and an MVP candidate in Kevin Durant for long stretches of the season. You saw a guy like Russell Westbrook really emerge and lead them triple-double after triple-double. The guy was just a monster. A guy like Kevin Durant coming back, outscoring his minutes in the preseason, which is something that you don't see. They added reinforcements last year with Enos Cantor at the trade deadline, DJ Augustin. They're a team that's really going to be a force to reckon with down there in the Western Conference. One of the most exciting things about the new NBA season is, of course, the rookies that come in via the draft. We get to watch a lot of them during the March Madness tournament. We saw Jaleel Okafor at Duke. We saw Carl Anthony Towns at Kentucky. Who's your rookie of the year? I think you got to go with a guy like Stanley Johnson. Stan Van Gundy in Detroit is known to do very well with young players. We saw what he did with Contavious Caldwell-Pope. Stanley Johnson is a guy at 6'7", 245 that is a bit of a tweener, can fill the 3 and 4 spot. His body really plays in today's NBA. And very quickly, Ali Khan, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who's the most valuable player for the 2015 season? I talked about him earlier. I think you got to go with Kevin Durant, an absolute scoring machine. After everything that happened to him last season, I think he's going to come back strong and be the 2015-2016 MVP. And you heard it here first. Ali Khan Johnny picking Kevin Durant to be his MVP. Thank you so much, Ali Khan, for doing this. Loved it.
Good old NBA action to finally tip off. Of course, the Raptors are in action tomorrow night against the Indiana Pacers at the Air Canada Center. But Pamela, what are you looking forward to this next week? Oh, next weekend is a Champions League final. Sorry, a Champions League match between what it seems like a final. It's Paris Saint-Germain between Real and, and Real Madrid. Well, it's going to be the return of Angel Di Maria. Now he's a Paris Saint-Germain forward, and he's going to face his former team, Real Madrid, for the first time since he left the team around 2014 in August. But I'm also looking forward to Halloween. So what are you going to dress up as, Kyle? I could not possibly tell you that information. i got to keep it a secret for all my fans out there. But anyways, it's been great hanging with you guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Kyle. She's Pamela. See you next time.